hear me? Yes, I hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Have you got stable Wi-Fi? Yes, I'm at home now. I'm sorry because I'm 15 minutes late because I no just problem. arrived home. No problem, no problem. We'll just wait for the percentage to go up a bit because it's a bit perfect. So obviously we'll talk about your time play as a player. We're not going to talk too much about that. We're going to talk about Red Star Academy when you moved at the age of 17, when you moved to France. Uh, yes. And then we're going to move into the time as a manager. So is, do you have any questions? No, I'm okay. I'm okay. Perfect. And you, how do you pronounce your surname? Uh, surname is Kurtusic. Kurtusic? Yes. Kurtusic. Okay, perfect. You ready to start? Yes, sure. Today I'm interviewing Ivan Kurtusic, who is a, full, a former player, but now is a football coach. He's played in Red Star Belgrade's academy. He's played in France. He's played everywhere. And now he's a manager who's, play, who's managed in Croatia and elsewhere. Ivan, I welcome you to the show. How are you doing? I'm very glad you 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 invite me to do the interview, and uh, uh, I'm very honored for joining you in the, in this talking. Thank you very much. So, as I said to you, we're going to be talking about your whole journey, um, and that spanned across a long, long time, starting in uh, 1997 and ended in 2017, I believe. And then, obviously, you moved into the coaching. So, talk to us then. When you were younger, um, probably before you got into the academy at Red Star Belgrade, what was it like in your household? Were you always into football? Was it parents that got you into it? It was a different time than, than I think now because I'm also a father. I have two kids. One is the son of the five years old. In my time, we didn't have the mobile phones. Obviously, the technique was not like in, uh, on the level now where everyone are on the iPad, uh, iPhone and stuff like this. So we was like kids in the area, in the neighborhood, playing football all day after school. And uh, this is something is, uh, I think, a big difference, this street football what was my generation have it it's missing now a lot it's like a few hours per day of practicing and uh, this is something everyone was doing like someone was on the basketball someone was on the football but we was like everyone was on the training with the age of seven eight we already starting in the local small clubs it's, that's really interesting. You mentioned street football, and I've spoken to so many professionals, so many coaches, and they've all told me, or the majority of them have told me, that street football is so crucial to be able to build on a player's attributes. But what do you think street football does to allow players to get to a certain level? First of all, we get habit. We get habit of the football every day. We get habit of the football like not my father push me to go on the training and drive me with a car and bring me back. It was a, a daily... Uh, use that we are every day playing and that we are every day in the neighborhood then you're getting the spirit of the winning you want to win it's on the, with your friends in the area in the in the neighborhood and then you're getting a lot of technical things because you're doing something one million times in these kind of games uh, dribbling uh, receiving the ball first touch is is really crucial is really crucial it's missing now and um, Okay, football is changed and uh, we are progressing and it's more physical now, it's more running, but uh, we lose number 10. Everyone agree about this one, the, the, the crucial number 10 with uh, big players in the past. But this is, I think, one of the crucial reasons because uh, never you're going to get so many repetition on the training of one hour like you are playing seven days a week. Sometimes we was playing on the night light, you know, up to 11, 12, and then that's like five, six, seven hours of playing of street football. It's very important. Easy two on two or three on three, four on four, doesn't matter. Small goals uh, post for the handball, doesn't matter. But it's a really crucial one. Uh, it's missing, I think, now in this generation. Would you say that the intensity of street football also makes players better than if they were to just play 11 aside? We was... Uh, the, I need to explain you something. When you have age of six, seven, eight, and you are playing with the boys of 10, 11... It's a big difference in that age. And uh, you're getting a lot of intensity. It's duel, it's running, it's dribbling, it's everything. They are stronger, bigger, but you're getting a fighting spirit also. You're getting a mentality. You are uh, building something, you know, and um, fighting um, for winning uh, the best friend uh, team and um, playing in, I don't know, in, in two liters of Coca-Cola or something, you know. The, uh, intensity was really good because this was not age football like now. Everyone's six years old and we are playing. No. It was like six against eight or eight against 10 years old boys. I think it was also crucial for this kind of things, for intensity and mentality. Mentality is really crucial, isn't it? I mean, you may have uh, obviously experienced this. So if I was uh, a 10-year-old boy when you were growing up or a 10-year-old boy now, would my mentality be different? Yeah, of course. 
I have a son and I have a lot of friends having the kids. It's a big difference. If my son dropped down on the some ground where we playing the football and start crying, everyone uh, running. And uh, my, 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 my wife and uh, everyone, grandma, yeah, you are hurt, what's happening, uh, don't cry. This was the street life, you know, you're playing football, you drop down, you are dirty, you are not eat all day, you are just drinking water and you keep going. And you keep going and you keep going. Against older boys, younger boys, you want to be the best, you want to do this, you want to do that. I think now is a big, big, big difference in the, in the style of life. In the parent uh, style of life with the kids, sometimes my, my parents even didn't know uh, where I am. They didn't, know to, they didn't need to ask because I was down in the street playing football. Everyone knows. Now your kids doesn't go alone over the street, doesn't go alone to the school. We are uh, driving them to the school, give them back. You know, we they are not um, allowed to be, um, uh, how to say it on English, to be uh, personal, you know, to not be depending on the someone and something, to get the life as much more as it could in the age they are growing. And that starts with football. You think football is a really key factor? It was a key factor for my generation, for sure, and generation before me more even. For sure, it was a way of life. It was a way of uh, growing up. It was the way of uh, you getting a uh, habit in the life and discipline and winning mentality and friends and team and building and a lot of things you are getting in that way. You even didn't know when you were a kid. Now you see it, but it was a big difference that time and this time now. Obviously, you're from Serbia uh, originally, and obviously I'm English and I've, I've been brought up in England. We've never had street football, but I know a lot of European, South American countries have had street football uh, as part of their culture. But someone from Germany has told me that uh, in recent years, the, the, the street football side of the game has gone. In Serbia, how did it go? What was what, what, One day they were playing street football, the next minute they weren't. Why did that change? No, no, it's change of style of life. Definitely it's change of style of life and uh, my generation became the parents and I think we change it as a parents. As I explained you already, uh, this was the way to you lead, lead your kids to be independent from the parents. We change it, my generation change it. I don't think it's good. I don't agree with this one, but it's neat. Now it's neat. Uh, before you didn't have these kind of cases, example in Serbia, when someone hit the kid on, with a car by accident, where something happened with the kid, that kid disappeared, when something happened that somebody killed the kid or something happened, these bad things, in my time, this was not even in the mind of the parents can happen. So we was, let's say, more relaxed, my, my mother and father, and there was more different style of work. They was working in the move, in the companies, they didn't work on remote from the home and uh, they, they didn't have also mobile phones and stuff like this. So they need to teach us life to be independent as soon as possible so we can work. Now uh, you have nannies uh, in Serbia a lot. You have uh, grandma doing uh, two jobs for the, 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 the daughter, uh, keeping the kids uh, home, um, take care about them, uh, you know, and then the kids are, let's say, for my taste, spoiled. My taste, as I said, it's spoiled for the life. It's not the football. Football was the way in the culture that you getting the life uh, the school. Definitely. Definitely. You know, you are spending five, six, seven hours with the kids outside. There is a lot of things happening there. There is a lot of tense. There is a duels. There is you lost, you win. You can uh, be angry, you can be happy, you have the teammates, you have opposite team. You know, uh, you, you're learning life. And this was the culture, very, very important part. But we, uh, we lost it. We lost it because the, the way of life generally in the Balkan area and in Serbia is changed. And changed by the parents' generation we are, my generation. The transition then. So from yes. when you went from street football to 11 aside, and obviously you ended up uh, at the Red Star Belgrade Academy, a really top club in, in Serbia. What was that transition like? Because obviously in 11 aside, it is usually less technical than street football. It's less compact. What was that experience like to transition into an 11 aside pitch? It was a big, big, big transition in the way I was already grow up with 12 years old. Because example, I was living... Let's say my, my house in that area, in that moment, was 20, 25 kilometers from the Red Star uh, training camp. And I need to change two, three public 
buses to come on the ground and have a training. It was 12 years old boy who woke up at six in the morning because the training at Red Star was at nine. Going with the two, three public bus where it's crowded in that time because not too much cars and it was, let's say, the period 1997, 98, 99 was a tough period in Serbia, was the NATO bombing and stuff like this. So it was tough for the living. But you are going there, you come there, you see the professional club where is, let's say, the army style. We was like the soldiers. But I come in in the Red Star by they are watching me on the some small club 11 aside game, friendly, against Red Star. We lose 3-2, I score 2, and they take me. It was a different period. Now you have a lot of platforms, a lot of this, a lot of that. People don't see the games alive. Uh, there was like, oh, I have a good player. Uh, look his name already with 12, 13 years old. He has transfer marks. He has this, he has that. You can find him on the some platforms. And people doesn't see alive games, players, characters, habits. This was the, the Red Star giving to us. And it was very important. I think was very important. This kind of style of life. Nine o'clock was the training. We was training by the sun, by the... Uh, snow time by the rain time there was no excuse you don't come on the training and then afterwards you coming back 20 25 kilometers was two hours for sure you going directly to the school you have your grades you need to do you are afternoon in the school and then even sometimes was again the training seven o'clock eight o'clock in the evening where you need to come again so it was daily routine very very tough for the kid of 12 13 14 years old does social media play a part in that? Because you mentioned platforms and you mentioned, um, you know, the, these sorts of access that 12, 13-year-old children have. So yes. pl players like Jaden Sancho, for example, who got essentially kicked out of Manchester United, he did take to social media at times. He was quite unhappy with the way that the club were treating him. Do you think that social media plays a part that a 13-year-old could potentially have a million followers if they if they were on social media frequently? Is that a, And then they start to become quite arrogant and like Jude Bellingham yes. has because he's moved to Real Madrid. So yes. do you think social media plays a part? Of course. A way of life. Style of life now. You know, the habit that everyone doesn't need to have any respect to the older one, to the coach, to the teacher in the school, to the stuff like this. Everyone have the right to do anything and there is always some fighting for the rights of the people, of the right of the kid. You know, in my time, you need to listen. You need to follow because there is someone who is older than you, who is teaching you something and you need to listen. You don't need to accept. You don't need to do it in your life when you are growing up, but you need to accept that you need to learn. Now, this time, I think that the kids and the star and the football things, especially because there is a lot of money, uh, more than in my time, example, it's different of 20 years old, in the Red Star, the, the example, the, the, there was a rule that the first contra contract professional who signed, you have enough money like the, any regular job in Serbia. It's a really small money and it's a million club who can pay you. But there was a rule because they were teaching us money will come if you are good, if you keep going, if you keep working. You know, and, and uh, this is something it's missing now. No one doing nothing. You have the... I already... I think I, I read it two days ago, three days ago. They signed in England, in Wolverhampton, the guy of seven years old, already professional, with a salary more than maybe his parents ever will have all together in the family. You know, so it's not good, this style. But it's a transition. It's a football way. It's going on that direction. You cannot uh, ignore it. You need to adapt it. But is it good or not good? I don't think so. It's good because we don't anymore produce so much good quality big players you have the time in 2000 2010 where i have knowledge of every ac milan barcelona player and i know everyone was like wow you have ronaldo giovanni uh, i don't know in, in milano you have uh, pirlo this and that and if we start talking about this one now we will find five of them in all five leagues together it's a different style of football definitely that is really interesting that you said that. So inside of Serbia, maybe the reason why you haven't had so many huge players coming through, I know you've got Milinkovic and Marko Gruic and you've got decent players, but you haven't got a star man. You haven't got a key player. No and Is that why? Because the culture of football is changing that seven-year-olds are getting signed to professional yes. contracts? Yes. Yes, definitely. And we change in Serbia the way we are teaching the kids in the football way. 
and uh, these uh, big academies like Red Star, Partizan, Vojvodina, the top academies in the world, maybe in top five, these three academies are with Ajax and stuff like this. They was producing uh, top level players in the period of 2010. We have the captain of Manchester United as Vidic. We have captain of Chelsea as Ivanovic. We have Matic in Chelsea with him. We have uh, uh, Kolarov in uh, Manchester City. We have top players. Now we don't have them. And it's a problem in the way of schooling these kids in the football way. It's changed the way of uh, selecting them. It's changed the way of we are trained them. I don't think so. We are even good enough more in the system of the kids' work because we don't follow in the trend of the football. And the trend is really changed. It's everything about physical and speed now in the, in the top level. And the Serbian, we are in the middle. Let's say we are stuck. From traditional street football, we want to have this kind of players, but we don't have the condition. And this kind of selection for the top level physical way football players and technical, we don't select it on that way and we don't train on that way. Because first of all, we even don't have this condition. You need to have perfect ground, everything settled, uh, you know, these kind of things. And we don't have it in Serbia. So let's say that uh, transition eating us. I see it like this. Again, really interesting that you mentioned that. And in England, there was a rule that was passed last year about uh, heading, that children uh, under the age of 12 couldn't head the football in training. The coaches couldn't do any training that involves headering the ball. What's your opinion on that, Ben? The way that they're changing the game and they're modifying the game so children at the age of 12 can't play a certain level. Yeah, OK, they are changing on the way with uh, some, again, again, I tell you, freedom of the thinking of everyone, everything. Uh, if you're hitting the ball with the head of age of seven, uh, I don't think so. It's so uh, disaster for the kid. <laughs> it's disaster if he come with the age of 12 and he's afraid to hit the ball with the head. And he should to be a professional. He already lost, let's say, five years of practice. You know, so again, I tell you, we, we are coming to the mechanical type of football playing, like a robot system, I call it. Because it's everything It's uh, mechanical. Pass, receive, pass, receive, pass, receive, run, pass, receive, run, and pass, receive, run. And who doesn't run so fast like me, he considering the goal. Who doesn't receive the ball so fast like me and first touch, a good one, and first pass, strong and tough, that's it. You know, we don't have any more, as I also read Bielsa said, we don't have jokes. We don't have it anymore. We don't product it. We don't ask from the kids to do it. You, you will come in any training now, everyone in the youth already working and asking, uh, receive pass, receive pass. They are not playing anymore football. Football culture has really changed. I mean, th there was a video of um, Tony Cruz where he was washing his boots um, himself, his own boots, at the end of a training session. And one of the younger players came into the room and started recording him and kind of was asking, what are you doing? What's this about? And on social media, of course, there was a lot of questions as to why a player is cleaning his own boots. But that shouldn't be another job. There shouldn't be someone who's there to clean the boots. The players should be doing it themselves. Yes, but this is the way of culture. They are growing up in their families, in the clubs, and it's coming like this. And the Tony Cross, it's, let's say, still the old school. Same like Modric and everyone who has any uh, opportunity to talk with these kind of people and to see how they are working and, 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 and how they are living. He will understand why they are coming from another culture. It's nothing to do with this modern thing now. But again, I tell you, we cannot ignore these kids and the way they are growing up. As a coach, you need to adapt. Because if you don't adapt, you are still depending on the players. The, and if they don't find the, 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 the network connection with the coach, they will never have 100% on the ground. If you see the, the, the fresh um, thing is Spain. Uh, it's a big difference in approach of the Spain and England. My, my view from the, from the side. It's a big difference where you see someone is injury, you see 10 players coming from the bench asking and... Uh, uh, you see someone getting, let's say, in the fight on the game. Everyone are there. And, and then you have the England who is maybe personally has the more quality than Spain. But as a team, doesn't look like this. Definitely. And if you put them one by one, everyone will choose England. Definitely. But something is missing. You know, something is missing. And that's why maybe you lose the game on the end. Poor game yesterday as well. England did not play up to the standard that was needed. Uh, and teamwork plays a big part of that. But jumping ahead now, we're going to go and talk about your player career in a moment. But 
you're mentioning that you're criticizing quite uh, the, the newest generation of coaches and players. You, you want to kind of keep it old school. When you're a coach, do, is that what you kind of like to do? Do you like to teach them a bit differently to what maybe the rule book might suggest today? Yes, trying to get them a freedom. Of course, they need to have demands. And they need to follow some discipline rules in the game. Discipline shape things for the team. It's very important. But they need to have the, 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 the space to think by themselves. Because you cannot control the football. You can do the statistical things. You can Statistical things, they show you everything, but you don't see nothing. You can have possession. You can have 20 shoots on the post. You can have 20 uh, corners and you still lose the game. Uh, you understand me? You can do the robot things uh, much more in football, but you need to find the, the, the border. You need to find the, the way that you don't lose what is the football. What's the football for everyone in the, in the world is the most important thing. You need to keep going with the, at least some space for the players to use the brain by themselves. Because anyway, you cannot control it. You cannot order it. It's not like you're playing PS and like left, right, left, right, pass, receive, shoot, you know, the things happening on the ground from the seconds to the seconds, changing the situation, they need to think. And they need to think fast. So what was your time like in Red Star Academy? Because we all know the atmosphere at the games. There's a huge atmosphere, Champions League all the time uh, for the club. But you were in the academy side of the game and you mentioned that players were like soldiers. And it was a really communal atmosphere. Is, is that how you describe it? It was the atmosphere, uh, yes, definitely. Definitely, family. And what was family. that like? What was that like over the few years that you were there or the year that you were there? It was the, the way of they are teaching us. Like, example, we was playing uh, all over the, the Europe and the world, uh, some tournaments and some competition as, and, uh, in the ages. And we win a lot of that. In the, even now, happening that Red Star have the better team than Barcelona school, or the, especially in the age 12, 13, 14, 15. We have the problem in Serbia later with the crossing from the U19 to the senior. This is something where we lost a lot of percent of the players. But in this small age, we are, let's say, that even better than the top levels in the Europe. And then you win the game and then you're getting somebody... Already that was the time when you're getting the offer. Example, I had the Arsenal offer to come as youth. But you even don't think about it because you are, let's say, under the program that Red Star is everything. It's your family. It's your mother. It's your father. You know, that fans on the, on the north side and you are watching uh, Red Star Barcelona in that time, example 1-1 one, one, or stuff like this. And you are like, wow, my dream is just one day to be on the dead ground under 50, 60,000. These people and I just get one time something, scoring, assistant, winning, and that's my dream. You don't care about the money, about size of the club. About... Now the time is changed. Now a lot of talents with the age of 15, 16, 17, 12, 13, going, going, going. First offer coming uh, with the money, they are going. They are gone. And that's basically that, that that's something also is changed. So we was the family thing, culture, different style. No one from my generation didn't go, example, from the Red Star youth. But it was a generation where the Red Star last time getting around 50, 60, 70 million for the transfer of the my age players. It was the famous uh, 1984 generation. You had a lot of top players. Example, I don't know, in England, uh, who played with, from my generation. You have uh, Basta in Lazio. In, uh, you have um, Bosco Jankovic in Mallorca, in Palermo. Um, Dejan Milovanovic playing in um, Nantes. Uh, it's all from one generation. Maybe seven, eight, ten players. And the last one, where the Red Star have the big impact. So, you were at Red Star, and you did decide to leave. And did, what, what happened in these few years? So, in 2002, did you leave Red Star? Yes, I left the Red Star because I was impatient. Honestly, I was impatient, and I wanted to be the senior level, and I was the national team player in that time. And I lead to Vojvodina on the loan to be senior. First, first my, my, my thing. So they sent me there to be the senior. It was 2001. So I spent like uh, one year in Vojvodina senior. With the age of 17, I was already a senior. Then I moved to one club in that time. was a very good one in Serbia, playing Copa UEFA, Smedrevo. And uh, winning the cup of the Serbia, also on the loan. And then I get first, let's say, big chance 
in January to move to France. It was a good, good offer. The club wanted to sell me. I was young, young, very. For my, my thing, even too much young. But moment was difficult in Serbia after all the things happened before. And the country was, let's say, on the beginning after NATO bombing and everything. We was living tough and hard. So I decided to go. I decided to go and I think 15 January, I was in uh, Corsica on the Bastia, big club in that moment with SEN as a captain. And the uh, first game was three days later in Corsica. Paris Saint-Germain was uh, ghost, ghost team. And uh, it's ridic- it's funny thing that he was coming in the game 75 minutes and I was coming in the game 77. So let's say we was near each other Oh, outside of the ground and I was watching him on the TV, television seven days before only you know so stuff like this happening very fast in football I believe it though I great believe experience moved, I didn't I, I believe that you moved for money as well I think when you yes. moved to France was it 350,000 yes yes and what was, what was that feeling like I mean you, you were quite young at the time to then have that money around you to move to France and you're moving to the best division in France yes um, you know when you have um um, family thing that you need to sort it with the money side also and you getting this kind of offer in the age of 17, 18, 19 and you think you are already grow up enough for this kind of level and uh, this kind of jump from Serbia to there you don't think too much and if you ask me now it was a mistake definitely too young Definitely alone there. Definitely doesn't know any habit of the way of the life, league, uh, language. Uh, big trouble also there with uh, for me. No one speaking English. So big jump and um, everything was great for me, let's say, the, the, the first period. But I didn't hold because in that time there was a needing visa for my family, especially my mother, to come to visit me and... No one can, it was not the time of um, these things with the mobile phones and with the internet calls and it was hard. It was hard, so I didn't stay long and I didn't, let's say I was uh, lost very fast. How was your time in in the top division in France? How did you describe that? Was it a year that you were there for? Yes. It was a great time for me. You see a lot of things, you learn a lot of things, but I didn't develop. I was not ready. Definitely, definitely. It was to me. I was not social, physically, psychologically ready for this kind of level. And then when you are alone there and after the training, everyone going home with the families and stuff like this, you stay alone and you just don't give your maximum. Somebody maybe yes, but my mentality obviously was not strong enough. It's, it's definitely my, my something uh, I do wrong, uh, not in the way of the sports training and stuff like this. Uh, more was the problem with my mind and mentality. We're going to talk about the time that you spent in France in a little in a while, but you also played for your country um, 20 times. Yes. What was that feeling like to be called up? Was it for the under-19s? So go ahead. You're playing in the best academy, arguably in Serbia, now to represent the country. What's going through your mind? Yeah, you, it's this is something again. I tell you, very connected with the growing up style and um, habit you are getting from the family things home and the family thing in the something like Red Star. And then when this happens, it's maybe the biggest honor for you. And when you're getting this jersey, it's a different level. But also, as I told you, it was a um, different style of living and working and uh, growing up. And now you have some. Things like Serbia always have the problem with the team. We didn't do nothing on the European uh, Championship and we don't have, uh, let's say, big stars anymore and big uh, clubs and maybe few, one of two, you can say for Vlahovic, that is the maybe the top level in, in, in Juventus, all the rest playing in the middle European teams and leagues and not even in the Europe, in the Arabic country and stuff like this. So it was for us in that time something when everyone's wishing to win the game, everyone wishing to play. And if you don't play, you don't have any trouble. But now it's, time is changed again in that way because um, the, this personality, this ego, 
Again, I think even on this European Championship, show us that uh, Serbia is not on, on, on this side uh, going in the good direction. What was that call-up feeling like when you got called up? Because obviously there was not a lot of technology back then. Was it a letter? Was it a call? How did you get... They're calling the club. They're sending the letter to the club and the club calling you and tell you that you need to be there and there on that time, in that, in that area. In that time, we didn't have the national team training camp. We are meeting in some hotel near the Red Star even stadium and training usually on the Red Star or Partisan grounds and going somewhere to play the games. Do you remember the best time? That you, you know when you went away from Serbia? Was there a, a time that you played away from home? Uh, for the national team you are asking yeah, for? Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course, of course. We are. We was uh, going and playing uh, European qualification, I think, even European championship under 19 or under 17. We finished, I think, silver, stuff like this. It was a great generation, generally. You have that... Um, 84 generation from the other clubs also was some few top level players like Milos Krasic from Juventus X and um, CSKA Moscow and stuff like this. So he was youth in Vojvodina and um, partisan players. And we have a very good generation in that time, 83, 84. It was maybe the last uh, generation Serbia had uh, in that type of development and working system. What would you make of that time when you went abroad? just any of the time that you played away from home, that you're playing on foreign soil, you're probably leaving school early or whatever you had to do to go ahead and play against countries that on the big stage, under 17s, under 16s of, of European championships. Do you remember the best memory about playing away from home? Yes, yes, for sure, for sure. There was, um, there was a qualification round. We played in Hungary, I think. England was playing also with us and we was first in the group. Uh, you you love it. It's top of the dream for you in the moment, for sure. You think you are very important and that um, that you are going to be one one day the player of Real Madrid and stuff like this. And in the moment, you don't understand the football way. It's important with 12, yes, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Every age you are in the moment and work, it's important. But in, ten, in, in that moment, it's your whole world, it's yours. Basically, that's how you feel. You are going there, you're giving your best, you want to win. Um, we was in the sports academies after the, the, uh, the basic school of eight years. We're getting all in the sports academies because this was the academy where we're going, uh, high school where we have allowed to not be in the school five, six days in the month or something when we're going abroad and playing these kind of tournaments, games and stuff like this. The team that you were in when you moved to France, they oh. didn't get relegated. They stayed up by one point. Yes. What was that season like? Do you remember the expectations? And obviously, when you managed to stay up and play another season in Liga, what was that feeling like for the whole club? Uh, it was, let's say, the transition time there also. It was, let's say, the bad moment of the maybe two old team. In the moment, we didn't have the team is compact to play the that level. We have uh, some players like uh, Laslan, who was the good striker, tall one. French guy, but already in the age. And uh, we have, let's say, Mr. Ciccolini was the coach, if I remember the name good, but yes. Um, he was long time in that club already, let's say, for my opinion, maybe already somebody with a fresh team need to come in. So we have tough year, but on the end, everyone was happy because the club stay. Was that the best memory at the time that you were there? Yes, yes. Because again, I tell you, I didn't play too much. And uh, I didn't have too much space for myself and I didn't progress as I wish to do it. And uh, it's a good memory. But again, I tell you, maybe uh, my wrong decision for the moment to going there. Not about the club and uh, anything else. League, no, definitely that you understand me good. Just my, my moment of going there maybe was not so good for myself. Because the following year, you ended up going to Bosnia to play for... Yes. I'm not going to pronounce the name well, but I'm going to try. Banja Luka. You played yes, for them. Yes, it's a this year champion of Bosnia also. Borac Banja Luka is the biggest club there. Biggest club in Bosnia. And you moved yes. there and you stayed there for two years. I haven't got too much about that time because there wasn't a lot online. But what can you tell us about the two years that you spent there? To leave France when you went there as a player thinking that you could be quite a decent player to so yes. now going to Bosnia. I just wanted to go home. Honestly, my mind, my mind was done. And between all the offers I had in the moment, 
Borac was the champion of first year. We was the champion of Republika Srpska in Bosnia. They playing two different league. The next uh, next year they was making a unique league like it's now. And this was the let's say the biggest Serbian club even now there. And they was last year champion also of Bosnia, uh, 2023, 24 season. So I didn't do nothing, um, not expected. I just wanted to be close to my family home and to everything. So I pick a club where I can chase the title in the country and where I can be close to my home. What's that like to be given all these offers on the table to say you could go to Bosnia? I'm going to make up a few here. Bosnia, Finland, Sweden, Switzerland. When they're on the table and, you know, they're all different sorts of clubs, but I'm sure the majority of them are having the same ambition to challenge for a league or to avoid relegation. There's a clear objective when you move to this club. What is that like as a player to know that these clubs are after you? Well, let's say that you need to have someone, uh, what I didn't have in my career, to take care about these things because you are too young to make this decision properly. And this is the most important things for uh, a young player is a decision of the way he will go. Because I make one, two mistakes for my career as a football player and I never catch the level I should to catch maybe with my quality. I was on the end um, after Bosnia, moving there, moving this, moving that, going there, going this, nothing perfectly, nothing good. I never come back on the level I should to get it after the Bastia or in the Bastia. In the Bastia, when I want to go, I already have the offer maybe to play uh, French B. Uh, level and stuff like this, but I didn't was strong enough uh, in my head with my choices. My parents never interval in these things because they didn't know nothing about football. They always say what you pick is the best, but uh, I didn't pick good, honestly. And I getting my career in the financial thing okay with China because I spent seven years in China. And if I didn't have this kind of luck to go there and spend there seven years as a player, Probably I would be one of these 97% football players who is after the career doesn't living from the money they are earning in football. Because only 3% of the football players after the career can actually live from the money they are getting in the football career. And that's a really, really big uh, problem uh, no one getting care about. And I had luck with China, but um, a lot of them who doesn't maybe have this luck, it's coming to the big problem. Because your chance in the football is maybe one, two times to get a proper way and to get a high level, to progress, to make it. If you're coming down from this road one, two times with the mistakes, I think um, percentage maybe is 1% that you will come back your career on the, on the big level. Near enough. I'm not going to say all of them, but I say the majority of the players that I speak to have that problem where they're, they've gone through clubs like you, two years here, one year here, three years here. There's not always certainty about their next move or if they're going to get wages because a lot of the clubs that they're at can't afford wages at times. And it's quite shocking. And that's the side of football that the people don't see. They see the Mbappes getting these, all the money and all the Rolexes yep. and everything that they, that they would like. So we're going to jump ahead in the next 10 years because there isn't too much that's notable apart from uh, obviously you moved to North Macedonia after you moved to uh, Bosnia. You stayed in Bosnia for two years and then you moved uh, during this next 10 years to FC, uh, is it Good Goodja? Yes, it's a club on Malta and then I went to Bahrain, Middle East. I go to Asia, I play in Bangladesh, in countries where anyone give you any money because you're coming older and older and you are picking first a good offer you are getting on the table. And on the end is my good luck as I finish in China in the moment when China start to progress on the big level and I catch some good things there. And in Hong Kong, I was... Uh, um, my resident, so I, I I really get luck on the end with the financial thing, not with the football thing. I never catch any serious level, and I don't call this country with a serious level of top uh, level in Europe and France and Red Star. I didn't catch never this kind of level. Maybe it was my quality, maybe it was my mentality, my decision. I don't know, but on the end, uh, when you finish your career, honestly, to tell you, I think the most important thing for the football player is how you're going to live after it. Because you have the family, you have kids already, probably with 33, 4, 5 years old, and you need to live after the football. And if you don't have nothing in your life from the football to support this kind of life after it, 
then it's coming the big, 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 big problem for the minds of the players. And um, this is not easy things to accept that you need to be somewhere a waiter with 35 years old or some regular job and you don't know to do nothing because even if you play a Red Star or you don't play in Red Star in some smaller club, you need to train. <laughs> Basically, your things you are losing the time on the football is the same. It's not just two hours per day of the training. Any professional clubs in Malta or in Belgium, you're training six, four hours per day, spending time in the quarantines and stuff like this. So basically, you are not uh, eligible to live a life. You don't know nothing to do. And you don't have any incoming if you don't earn the money during the career. So when you finish the career, I think for all the players, this is the most important thing. Can I live now and what I'm going to do now? You were in FC Gujda and you were the first foreign player to be uh, the captain in their history, which is a great achievement. So obviously, congratulations. You mentioned Middle East there. You were yes. in the Middle East and now we know the financial income that they're having. They're investing a lot into football and obviously you were there before that all kind of came into play. What was the difference between when you were there and what it's like now? Maybe apart from the financial structure, but what was the difference? What was it like to be a player in the Middle East when you were there? Culture. Different way of life. Culture. Different way of life, different way of habit. Definitely, if you're comparing with the Europe, nothing connected. Nothing connected. For them, football is a hobby. And this will never change. I'm talking about local players and local people. Football is the hobby. Something they are doing after work. Even the players, even the um, the, 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 the people uh, leading the club and stuff like this. And this is very hard to change. You will not change this one ever. You bring in the big stars. China do it the first one. It's not Saudi Arabia. And you don't change the habit. China is having the problem with the uh, working in the youth uh, level. They don't have any system. And this will, until they don't change this one, because the ground, uh, the, 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 the pool they are doing is too big, the ground. So they cannot control the way of work and process. And they don't have anything with this kind of things on the proper level. So when they come to the senior level, you don't have the player. And uh, the Arabic uh, in the Middle East generally are very talented players. Very quick, very fast, very good one with the technical things naturally. But they don't have the habit of the winner. They don't have that uh, depending their life on the winning or losing the game. Like Argentina have, like Brazil have. You know, it's a way of culture. They don't have it. For them, playing, losing, winning, everything the same. You moved to Hong Kong. Uh, for, to Eastern District and you played 17 games, three goals in the 16-17 season and you won the second tier as champions. You also played some games in the first division. That, yes. I'm, I'm, China was after that, wasn't it? Yes. Perfect. So you're in Hong Kong. What was that like? You've now moved, you're kind of moving more uh, eastward. You've gone from Middle East, uh, you've yes. gone from home to Middle East to now Asia. Hong Kong, what was that like as a culture for you to adapt? Perfect uh, uh, city and country for the life, I think. Very nice very nice, a lot of English, it was big English colony, but for the football level, let's say total amateur. Total amateur level with uh, for my opinion, um, this is what I already told you, big problem with the youth's work, the youth's training, uh, professional big academies in Hong Kong is three times per week, one hour. When they come to the senior, they are missing everything. Tactical way, habit, Stuff, but they are talented. They are talented a lot. Same, same like China. You can fight perfect kid, but this kid, no one work with him. And from age 12 to age 19, he's lost. He's missing all the steps to be the professional player. And then you have missing tactical things, technical things, um, habit things, mentality things. And it's very hard to get top level when you missing all these steps in youth. China. That was an interesting place, I'm sure, for you, because in yes. 2016, there was a big investment into uh, the Chinese infrastructure in football. But there still wasn't a lot of support in terms of fans going to stadiums, in terms of uh, sponsorships and all that kind of stuff. When you were there, it was a year after they started investing into football. What did you see behind the scenes that was going on that was a new in input into the system? Yes, it was the country idea to develop their football by buying the big stars and investing crazy money. But it's showing... Obviously, it's not the right way. And so oh, it was an order from the country and government that they investing a big money, bringing biggest star and trying to get the football up. But 
the problem you cannot build a house from the roof you need to start from the ground and this is something everyone missing in this kind of area where is rich countries they're just thinking if they buy the biggest player something will change yes but in the moment and in that team in the senior in the uh, stadium but it will not change crucial things you will not uh, product your own players for your own country so sure. this was the great experience perfect country uh, great people for the football for the culture for the everything i think um, you feeling like a king there as a foreigner Honestly, I tell you, and um, everything perfect, but uh, for them, their way they are picking was not good. Do you think Saudi Arabia will ever um, do well? As I don't team? think so. They will get a great impact with uh, these kind of things for their own national team here, for their own youth things in the football. I don't think so. They are ages uh, back uh, bringing the best uh, youth coaches from Portugal, Serbia, Brazil, uh, Spain, a lot of people working there, but as you understand the something for the england the football is everything for serbia the football is culture the way of life for the argentina for them is not for them is a hobby where they are going when they finish their things they are like to do and living things and you know it's something where they're going to spend one hour one hour and a half and go home so china then the infrastructure that was put into there when you were there obviously it was quite a new investment was the stadiums good the facilities what were they like Perfect. Everything new you have. Sometimes you come to the city who has three, four stadiums, brand new investment, 50, 60, 70 million each stadium and the city using only one. <laughs> the other two, three, four stay lock and everything new inside. You know, big, big, big money they were spending and investing. Uh, they wanted to, to, let's say, to restart their football, but they didn't start from down. They start from the roof. What would you rate your time in China? As a player, when you scored two goals in 21 games, what was that like? Well, everything perfect there. You don't have anything there to think about. It. They are so generous. They are so good people. And they so take care about uh, foreign people, generally Chinese people there, when you're coming to their country. Then you don't have any, any, any trouble. Uh, you are living a really, really good life. Same, same like in Middle East. The people are nice and kind to you and... Uh, but when you lose the game, example, you're coming to be stressed and you are not want to go home and you don't want... But they are going to eat, to drink, to sit outside like nothing happened. Oh, we're going to win the next one, you know, and stuff like this. So it's mentality different. You need to accept and adapt. And then you retired from football. So now we're going to go into your managerial side. But before we do, when did you make the decision to retire? And what was that process like? Uh, suddenly. Honestly, it was like one day I woke up and I didn't want to train anymore. And um, maybe strange to explain, but this is how it happened. Uh, I start my license in 2012 already. 2014, I take a UEFA B. 2017, 18, I take UEFA A. And I was always having idea I would stay in football after the career. And uh, I get uh, something like, let's say, it's happened just suddenly because soccer school of Arsenal was opening in China. And the license was sold by the owner of my football club and uh, should to be two head coach from England uh, but one of them getting uh, some medical problems and he didn't show they didn't have replaced so fast and I was the only one who has the license in that moment and uh, I get the, like offer from my boss of the club uh, that I don't go on my holiday home that my family come to China and that I start working this one and learning the process on the way and I was like, okay, let's let's try. Let's try. It's interesting. It's Arsenal. I get a chance to maybe go to London to see some trainings. And I, I really get it on the end. And it was a great experience. And uh, something I already, let's say, with the kids, recognize I would love to do it uh, in the future. And uh, that summer finish in the September, because I had still my contract with, uh, with the club, uh, it was like, uh, <laughs> okay, can I... Can I teach senior football and then and, and keep continue with the Arsenal thing and then and, and finish? I don't play anymore. And he was like, you decide like this? Yeah, I say yes. It will not change nothing from your side. I will help you. And we have a B team in that moment. It was this Eastern District and the Hong Kong League. And I accepted because I already was resident in Hong Kong to travel to China during the week, few days, and to work the uh, rest of the time with uh, this Eastern District Club as a coach. 
and that's how it started. Everything like, okay, we will see where it's going. And then, and, and then it's roll very fast. It's roll very fast. First year with the Eastern, we win a promotion. And uh, then I getting um, a new thing uh, from the, from the typo club who is in Hong Kong was champion and like was happening. Wow. 36 years old and already champions league qualification in Malaysia. AFC Cup with my club as a coach and very fast going up, 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 up. And it was a COVID time, 2012. Uh, 2020 was the COVID time. I didn't have pro license. So I was deciding anyway to go home and to start schooling for the pro license in Serbia where I need to finish it. And uh, I getting some club in uh, third league of Croatia to manage them. Uh, in the moment was a big name, but uh, now was the third league and the uh, second league of Croatia. We, we immediately that year was up in the first league of Croatia, was the second level of Croatia football because they have Premier League and the first league and the second one. And I didn't have pro license still in that moment. I was here is different little bit in Serbia. I, I signed up for the pro national where you can work only second league of Serbia. And this is two years. And then if you're working from these two years, at least one year as a head coach in the second league of Serbia, you're getting allowed to sign up for the Pro UEFA, who is for the whole world. And then you are going again two years in the school. So basically you need four years just to get the paper to lead any club. What is a lot of time for the coach who cannot uh, accept any offer anywhere. My club going up in Croatia and I stopped it because I didn't have the license for the next league. That's how I get the job here in Serbia, FC Machva, second league of Serbia, first division. However, to say it, uh, we have the Premier and then we have the first division. And I spent the last two seasons here as a, as a manager of the team, head coach. And now my process for the pro license is almost done. I have six, seven months more to UEFA pro coach uh, degree. And that's the moment I can open the door for myself and work abroad properly or in Serbia top level. Let's talk about the time that you went to Typo, your first proper managerial job. And in three or four years, you've managed to now get a UA for pro license, which will allow you to manage any any club in the world, any level. You had a lot of big results in that game, in, in that season, sorry. I mean, the season was cancelled for COVID, but there was a 5-1 loss, a 4-4 draw, a 6-3 loss. What was going on in that time that made you score loads of goals, but also the, the other team um, that you made you concede loads as well? I yeah uh, I need to tell you that I get the typo in the moment no one wants to be the coach of that club. This was the team who was not a, a project to be the champion. This was the team of the middle t- middle table, but we had like uh, the team was I think six seven games in a row lost. The mentality was down, everything was down. They changed two three coaches. An example, no one wish anymore to be the coach of Taipo in that moment, honestly. And I, I getting the offer uh, when they was already desperate to change something. And in the moment we started uh, with the um, one two games uh, where we, uh, per, let's say, turn around the mentality of the team, and uh, we was losing the game like I don't know two zero. And there was coming 2-2 two, two draw and then we losing the game 4-2, maybe 20 minutes to the end. And then by, by luck, we are coming 4-4 four, four and stuff like this. But it's changed the, the next period of the season. Because then we start to win in the game. I think we win nine in a row, something like this. And uh, the team is changed and um, we bringing uh, one very famous uh, South Korean guy, uh, player, uh, Kim, who was national team player of South Korea, 100 times stuff like this he was 37 years old but uh, his mentality and way of work uh, and dedication to the team uh, changed the mentality of all players maybe in the team and then he's starting something uh, let's say the sweet things when you are winning the game we are coming to the semi-final of the of the FA Cup we lose on the penalty against RNF in that moment RNF is a club who is really top 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 level of the paying uh, possibilities and stuff like this we win them in the league they was having that year one defeat in the league and the only one defeat was from us so if the COVID didn't stop in the moment I think that we should we will have the great season probably that one also probably but Unfortunately, the COVID come and everything stopped. Even we was playing up to the April, I think. Everyone stopped in January already. But we was playing up to the April. Only Hong Kong League, China, 
stop it, we play, and I think Belarusia, something like this. Only two leagues in the world was playing, and one of these was Hong Kong. On the end, we stopped in, 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 in April also, because the cases was growing and growing, and it was not safe anymore, obviously. And even we played the games without the fans and stuff like this, we was passing. But it was, at least we was working. We was happy because the results was good, the club was good, progressing good, everything perfect for us. But um, unfortunately, we didn't finish the season. Then you moved to Croatia in the 21-22 season. Am I right in saying that you were hired on the same day as the game? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? I didn't hear you. When you moved to Croatia in 21-22, yes. you were hired on the same day of the game, right? Yes. And you won 3-0. How, how were you hired? And then you I was watching. I was watching. Honestly, I was watching last two games of that team before I take, take over the team. I know already the, some things I want to change. And I had one training with the team before the game. This was the big team that was calling Enka Croatia. It was the team of um, uh, Mario Mandzukic and it was the team of Ivica Olic also. This was the team in the Premier League when they, this team was playing. Then the money problem put them down and they come to the League 2. That's third level. And uh, there was uh, some idea they were coming back and they are coming back, obviously. And this is, let's say, they have the new stadium. It was, it's two hours from the Belgrade. So for me, it was very good for my family and because we all, all come back from the China. So I, I accepted and, and we, we, we was uh, eight in the moment I take over the club and we finished number three that season and comes up in the league up. Uh, but uh, first league and Premier League in Croatia, you need to have pro license to be the head coach. So this was one of the men I cannot follow, basically. And the, and the most recent season, last season, and the season but, but before, before that, yes, uh, you played uh, very similar formations. You played four four two, four three three, and a four two three one. Out of those three, what's your preferred tactic? I was playing in Croatia three four one two. So it depends on the team. I don't have my favorite. Uh, formation because formation is just beginning of the game and, and then everything changes depend where is the ball where is the opponent where is your players so it depends of the the quality of the player I have I, I adapt uh, the system and the and the uh, formation we are playing how would you describe yourself as a coach quite attacking if you're playing three at the back uh, attacking uh, yes I think the football is playing for the goals and of course, you need to have discipline and shape in the in defending, but you need to score more than your opponent to win the game. And for me, I think this is the most important. And I'm someone who is already targeting as a young player's development coach because I already make, um, let's say, in Croatia, I, I, I put with 16 years old one player to be senior in my team. It was Matkovic. Now he is in Osijek, worth, it, they say, 10 million. All Europe wants to take him. He is under 21, the best uh, national team of Croatia. And they say he's uh, New Holland and stuff like this in Osijek. Uh, top, top level uh, player in the moment. Going to the top level, they had some offers crazy, like 10 millions now for him. They didn't sell him. But I'm someone who is already targeting. I already in much also have two, three young players I development and they are already in bigger clubs. Uh, so something is targeting me as a coach is someone who like to give a chance to the young players, someone who like to develop the young players, someone who has um, freedom to give to the some players, and then and, and of course with the modern uh, part of the football I need to follow um, because I cannot be someone who is living in the past and working in the past when the trend of football is going up and changing. I'm trying to adapt my own style uh, and to pick up some trend styles, uh, bigger coaches, names, things, what I like and uh, uh, change them into something uh, I think it will work uh, in my level of the players I have and team I'm working. The previous season before you joined, you finished ninth with 39 points under a different manager. The first season that you were there, you finished 11th with 37 points, won 18 and lost nine games. Uh, sorry, won eight and lost nine. What would, you, what would you make in your first season in Serbia back home where you were born, where you grew up, and then obviously finishing 11th. What was that like? What was the expectation? Transition year. I had... Uh, that this was the, the club who was dying down from the Premier League a year before. And the first year in the in the um, second league, uh, they just stay in the league, I think, in the last game. So it was big trouble. Club had the financial problems, big contracts from the Super League. Uh, players want to leave, no one happy. Old, old uh, fashion style of the playing, uh, old players... 
thinking they have the big names, big ego. So this was like spending one year of my time there to make change of the team. We changed, let's say, 17, 18 players in that season. And we was from the age of uh, average when I take them was 29 point something. I, we was coming down to 23.5, if I remember good. So this was the transition year when you need to spend one year of making the team two deadlines and uh, two pre-season trainings. And then this season uh, we started uh, much better and everything coming uh, back to the team and to the club. And we was, let's say, the one of uh, surprise in the league who can even chase to go up to the Super League and Premier League. And um, this is one of the reasons because um, there was some change in January in the club and the uh, political who is leading the club and the targeting of the club change with the new people coming. They didn't wish to push uh, that we chase Super League and Premier League. And I'm someone who like to have motivation and and then the and, um, challenge, you understand? And something what I already spent there two years to catch something good for the club and for the team. But they were saying that they are not ready and maybe they are right, maybe they are right. But I didn't have any more um, wishes to continue like this, honestly. So we part ways nicely as a friends and they finish as I leave them same top six. And uh, this came to the end. Uh, they was This is the best result in the last three, four years for the club, even more. And they selling uh, three young players to the some incoming transfers. So they are happy and everyone happy, as they say. But now is also... Now is also their changing of generation because two years contracts end to the many players. And this is one of the reasons I was pushing that we try to get maximum from this team because we was building these two years. But uh, obviously it was not the moment. How do you say goodbye to a football club? Behind the scenes with the board? Is it a, is it a few meetings? Is it one meeting? How do you call it quick? With me, honestly, was uh, very easily because I make my decision. Um, I was knowing from December it was going to be the election year in the Serbia. And when you're changing the government in the cities, uh, the new coming people, they are also changing the uh, uh, club management because all the clubs in Serbia are government. So there are the politician guys in the club and these politician guys usually doesn't know nothing about football. And uh, usually they are putting some ex-players uh, with the big names, but waste of the career, who is uh, uh, from the careers usually earning uh, enough money that they don't have nothing to eat at home. And then they are just following and listening what the politician guy is saying. So they don't have their own opinion. They don't have something they can say. They don't thinking footbally because they are thinking just to get some salary to survive. And this is something I was knowing from December, if this one happening, that I will quit. Because this is not the way I want to work and this is not the way I want to be part of the, that club. And when this one really happened on the January, for me it was very easy. I was calling the new president the uh, same moment when I find out it's officially and I was telling him, I don't see myself anymore in this club, we need to part ways. And they already expected because they knowing me that I want to, to be independent on my work as a coach. Or I want to be independent on my decision because I'm paid to make this decision. And on the end, and I'm professional and I'm going to the school and pro license to be coach, not to be follower. So something I don't like to do and something I don't think so it's good in Serbia, but it's happening. And it's uh, the way is not good because we don't do privatization of the clubs. Everything is government. So we have basically in the clubs, the people, they never kick the ball. And they never play football. So they're making the decision. And I think even it's coming also in the FA and it's coming now even to the national team, some kind of these things, intervalling, you know, and stuff like that. It's not good, but obviously it's, it's the moment it's happening like this and we part ways as a friends. That's it. So what's next for you then? You're only a few months away from getting your UA for pro, which means you can go else and anywhere in the world, coach anywhere in the world. You're still quite young as a manager. You're, you're only 40 years old. Managers can go until 75, possibly 80, but that's probably at a push. What would you obviously like to achieve? Obviously, the big clubs. But what's realistic, firstly, for the next season that you're in management? But then in 10 or 15 years, where do you think that management can take you? I want to develop myself. 
I think I'm the young one. I need to learn a lot more. I need to be a part of the bigger system and dependent system where it's everything working on the football way as it is on the best countries, honestly. And this is my targeting now. I'm really trying to get uh, myself in the part of some club system where I can develop and then see where is my limits. And um, of course, in Serbia, I have a lot of offers in the few months back and uh, in the foreign offers I had, uh, I cannot accept them because of the UEFA Pro license. It's not possible in the moment. So I am not working still in Serbia because I'm trying to get uh, in Serbia these few clubs left that still they are not under the, let's say, political influence. So it's not easy. But for me, I am, the first target was my Pro UEFA license. When I get it, I will sure then be open to go abroad and to learn something. So it's same, same like a player. If you want to develop yourself and to work your way, you need to go on the West. In, if you want to get the money side, you need to go on the Middle East and the China. And uh, for me now is the moment I'm just looking uh, football side, the money side now, football side development, pushing to the limit, learning and see where it's going to go. So in 20 years, where would you see yourself on an England level? If you were trying to compare... I, to I, I think in 20 years, probably, probably I will not work as a coach because I think I need to have some time for my family because football is not so easy. You need to know when to stop and not push over the border. You have a wife, kids, you are losing a lot of time. Uh, there and there and of course if you don't come to some top level of the coaching what is not easy at all but basically I think I will work this job and pick my clubs uh, as I tell you based on something uh, where I can um, be functional for my family also this is already I'm doing and something I don't want anymore to chase from country to country I don't have any more even need to chase from country to country so it's good for me this moment and now I'm a little bit relaxed about everything and I will go step by step, but uh, I will, must to be functional for my family. Ivan, we've spoken for over an hour about your career in Liga in France, the Red Star Belgrade Academy, being a manager in all sorts of countries and obviously a former player in Macedonia, in Bosnia and so many more. I thank you very much for joining me. Sure, thank you very much for calling me. It was a big, big pleasure. Perfect, Ivan. Thank you very much. So, what I'll do is I'll send you over the information as to when you're going to go on the radio and on uh, YouTube, Spotify and uh, SoundCloud. But when you're on YouTube and Spotify, it's two separate dates. So, when you're on YouTube and Spotify, I put it on social media and I can tag you on Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, everything like that. Do you have uh, Instagram? Yes. Perfect. Uh, could you tell me it so I can add you? Uh... I will tell you, just stay on the line so I read it, yeah. please. It's uh, Ivan Coach, I think, 84. Yes, I've got it. So I'll follow you. And then on the day of the interview, on the, when it goes live, I'll just uh, I'll do a collaboration post. So it'll get sent to your messages on Instagram. And then okay. if, it's the same post on both accounts. So, yeah, we're all good. Do you have any questions? No, thank you very much for your time. It Perfect. was a thank pleasure. You much. Thank you. Talk soon. Bye-bye.